Synergie, c'est l'occasion pour la filière euh, de se coordonner sur euh, l'accélération qui est devant nous en termes de développement des énergies marines renouvelables. Au niveau européen, on le voit, c'est considérable, puisqu'on veut passer de 20 gigawatts en 2020 à 60 gigawatts en service en 2030, puis 300 gigawatts en 2050. C'est trois fois la capacité de production d'électricité française actuelle. Donc il faut se rendre compte de ce que ça représente dans le paysage électrique décarboné de demain. Pour faire ça, un maître mot, la planification. Et cette planification, on l'organise au niveau des territoires, par exemple ici au Havre, on l'organise au niveau national avec les grands débats en cours sur la programmation pluriannuelle de l'énergie et puis la stratégie nationale mer et littorale. Mais il faut également l'organiser au niveau européen, c'est ce qui est en train de se faire. Et le chiffre en fait qu'il faut retenir, c'est quatre exercices de planification par bassin européen. Mer Baltique, Mer du Nord, Arc Atlantique et Méditerranée. La France a une chance exceptionnelle puisqu'elle est présente sur trois de ces, de ces bassins. Et donc pour nous, c'est l'occasion du coup d'avoir réellement un exercice de planification intégré avec nos partenaires européens. The strategy of Shell is to become uh, an energy player right now. Our investment goes to the renewable industry. We are now uh, backed by our investors on the power strategy. We've uh, announced uh, 3 billion of investment this year. Next year will be even greater. We are talking about 5 billion. And that's a reality. By 2050, we will be delivering clean energy to our clients. That means <coughs> if today we are giving them uh, fuels, tomorrow we'll give them energy to do the same activity, but net zero. And that's a strong commitment that has been made by our, our CEO and which has been recently uh, backed by our, uh, our shareholders. So that's going to be the future of Shell. So indeed, there is um, some uh, Belgian citizens protesting against uh, Dunkirk because uh, the proximity of the beach and the visual impact. Uh, and we have um, so a minister of the North Sea who is uh, uh, trying to, uh, to ask France to move it a bit more for, far away from shore. I don't know whether he will be successful in it, but uh, we have known this, the same situation in our first projects where the Netherlands were opposing to uh, near-shore wind farms. So, and I think with consultation in the earliest stage of planification, these kind of uh, problems or issues can be solved. Certainly, what we have learned in, in Belgium, where we were early adapter, because we have now 2.2 gigawatt operational, what we see is indeed that uh, consultation also with the citizens is, is, is important, also with other users, uh, the fisher communities uh, and other users. It's very important to take them on board at the earliest stage of planification in order to prevent conflicts afterwards, uh, to do it on a European scale, to interconnect also, because not all uh, countries uh, have uh, sea resources, let's say Austria uh, is a landlocked country. So uh, to make it a beautiful European project for renewable energy, but also for the industry. It's also industrial and economic opportunity uh, that is really important because Europe is the leader now for a moment. China is, uh, is also now developing. And so we think it's, an, it's, a, it's a fantastic uh, European uh, export product. Well, for the time being, first of all, uh, hydroelectricity is about 100% in, in Norway. Uh, but we are now increasing the, the wind power, so the renewable in wind power. Uh, we are around 7.5% of our energy mix is now uh, can be contributed by, by, uh, energy, uh, by uh, wind. Uh, and the plans are actually to increase that a lot. So uh, we will uh, see if we manage at a certain point, we will actually, the ambition is to reach exactly the same production that we have of electricity today, also by, uh, by offshore wind. Well, we're part of all the, the European ambitions because we, we do participate in every, all the aspects of the European Green Deal, even though we're not a member of the European Union. Uh, so we share exactly the same ambitions as the European Union. So we have a very strong commitment to, to the ambitions, uh, very strong commission, uh, ambitions from the well, and then the Norwegian ambition uh, is for 2030 is to have uh, 2040 is to have 30 gigawatt, then and then for 2050 exactly the same ambitions that the European Union has.
we produce hydrogen, we develop and we finance our own production sites. We are doing all the deployment, so meaning all the engineering, the procurement and the construction of our own production sites. And after we operate our sites in order to sell hydrogen to our customer, so mobility usage or, or our industry. We have a first production site in operation now uh, in France, in Vendée, uh, which is directly connected to renewable energy sources. And in fact, this site is also to prove that it's possible today to win the fight, in fact, against climate, climate changes and to prove that it's possible today to act and uh, to do something in order to, you know, to, to limit the usage of uh, fossil fuels. This site is uh, in Arbor, so just next to the sea. Uh, we are directly connected to the wind turbine and we are also using seawater to produce hydrogen. So it means that all the process, all the stuff that you need to produce hydrogen are, are in, uh, let's say, sea condition. So there's a first step and we have a second step. We will produce by September uh, in offshore. So we will be connected to the first floating wind turbine which is in operation in France and uh, we will directly connect the first electrolyzer worldwide offshore uh, to this wind turbine and this site will be in operation by, by September.